Okay, um, this is reading from Proverbs 25 and verse 28. It says, um, whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. Um, talking about uh, a condition that could happen to us if we don't have self-governing ability, you know, we don't have any rule over our own spirits, um, which could, uh, this having no rule over our own spirit could uh, manifest itself in terms of, uh, like maybe, uh, you know, in terms of anger, you know, problem with anger, problem with you know, anything in excess, anything, or, or even, you know, not really stepping in, right, because of fear, um, all those kinds of things, right? Um, so, so, the, so he's talking about, you know, it's like a city that is broken down without walls, which means that um, the person is in a very vulnerable state. It's like a city that is broken down. And in olden days, we know that um, the wall, walls of the city or the gates of the city are really the protection. Right? The walls could be so thick. And we don't learn about, you know, uh, read about Jericho and how, uh, you know, the historical information is that two chariots actually could go side by side on those walls. And and even modern day, you see the, you know, the wall of Great Wall of China, and you see that uh, it, that is the you know, uh, the possibility of having a wall. So such a wall is like, um, you know, like a protection. Uh, and so if a city is without walls, making a, it's it's vulnerable to attacks, right? So a person is with, with without walls or without this kind of a protection is vulnerable to all kinds of attacks, vulnerable to manipulation, vulnerable to, you know, just like, in every situation, the enemy knows what buttons to push, what will really trigger, and then that's it. You know, there's no. On the other hand, we see Galatians five. Uh, I think it was verse twenty-three, which says that the gift of the spirit is self-control. The fruit of the spirit, sorry, the fruit of the spirit, the work of the spirit in a human, uh, in a in a, per, in a believer's life, uh, the end result is self-control that means self-governing ability so the spirit of god really wants us to come to a place of strength come to a place of not from a you know live in a vulnerable state but really live a guarded protected life and um, and he's you know really working in us to bring us to that place if we would you know, work with, cooperate with, and yield to the work of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So, just wanted to just remind us about that. Um, yeah. Let's pray. Father, we we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that uh, you are with us. You indwell us, Spirit of God. You know our needs, Lord. You know our limitations, Father God. You know our shortcomings, Lord, and you know the areas, Lord, which we need to grow in, which we need to build ourselves in. And so, Lord, we pray that even as we Pray in the spirit that we will build ourselves up, Lord, in the Holy Ghost, that we build ourselves in faith, and Lord, that we will be strong, as the word says, strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, Lord, that we will be strong in you and the in your power, Lord, and that we will we will be like a city with walls, Lord, protected, guarded, Lord, and with self-governing ability, Lord, as developed by the Holy Spirit. Master, we pray that each one of us, God, that uh, we will have this and have more of this in our lives, Lord. Um, Lord, I pray that you will lead us and, uh, and enable us to learn, enable us to put to practice on uh, this fruit of the Holy Spirit. And uh, may it be manifest more in our lives um, in every situation. We thank you. In Jesus' master's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, yeah, welcome to all those who joined us online. Uh, coming to um, life skills, we are looking um, really at last few chapters. Um, we looked at emotional intelligence last time, and we kind of touched upon cultural intelligence, right? So um, we saw that culture cultures differ. Culture being, uh, you know, it could be ideas, customs. Um, social behavior, Lord, uh, you know, of a particular people group, particular, you know, it could be even within a group, right? It could be within organizations, uh, within teams, and so on. So, um, culture, right? Uh, it's it's not only different nationalities or different um, ethnicities, but it could also be people of the same nationality, but uh, within a certain age group, right? 
maybe a certain language that they speak, the culture could differ, right? So what is this cultural intelligence that we're talking about? Okay, let me just quickly share um, one. Actually, I just want to share a picture. One second. OK. OK. Um, I hope you can. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Let me. <laughs> I'm not able to see the whole thing, right? OK, OK. OK. OK, it's not very clear. Let me just read it out. OK, this is a grasshopper. OK, this is a grasshopper. It's an insect. So it has three countries. This is an act, ad advertisement by HSBC, Hong Kong and Shanghai Banking Corporation. So this is what you know. the first thing is. It says USA, pest. OK, China, pet. Northern Thailand, appetizer. <laughs> right? So it talks about three different people groups, um, maybe speaking different languages. Um, and the same thing. Right, it's the same insect uh, in one national nationality. It is seen as a pet. You know, there's a thing which is eating everything, so exterminate it. In China, it, it's a pet. You could put it in a small box and carry it around, give it a name, feed it, etc. In Northern Thailand, it's it's edible, uh, used as an appetizer. So you know the the tagline for this ad is never underestimate the importance of local language so yeah so it's a global you know uh, bank so it says the tagline of hsbc is the world's local bank which means they understand the your culture they understand your you know what your needs are and and that's what they want to convey in this uh in this ad right so so you see that um so, so um just one second let me show the other thing um oops okay um now the notes that i'm sharing it's actually um it's not uploaded but i'll uh, i'll share it with you I'll put it in the I'll upload it in the classwork section. Okay, so if you, this is an article, so um, and it's uh, actually a lot of information from here is taken from an article by Harvard Business Review (HBR). So, uh, cultural intelligence. So, cultural intelligence is the ability to adapt to new cultural settings. So, you see the difference in culture, and you learn and you adapt to it. Right. So what is it? So people who have uh, cultural intelligence, it means or cultural quotient, you know, CQ, as they call it, they have the skills to go into environments, new environments with confidence, right? And to make informed judgments based on observation, evidence. Um, they excel at understanding unfamiliar or ambiguous behavior, right? So it becomes a lot more complex as we go around. Go along, you know. Uh, especially, let's say, one when one is ministering cross-culturally. Okay, so it will be very evident. For example, as as Indians, you know, we that's the complaint. You no, know, most people have when interacting with Indians. You know, are you saying yes or are you saying no? <laughs> because you seem to be nodding your head like that to say yes. You know, have you had breakfast? Hmm. So. The, the the question is, you know, are you saying yes or are you saying no? Because yes is like this, no is like this globally. But you are doing that, right? Um, so you know that's it. so. Some of these cultures or practices are across nationality, right? but it can even be within a within a nation, within a state, right? Especially something which is so complex like India. Right. Um, I know Lubega is there, uh, so I don't know how it works in in an African nation. I'm sure it's a, you know, it's it's similar, right? Um, like people might look the same, but then you know, uh, so different, right? Um, so 
it, it helps. It helps in knowing. It helps in uh, understanding, so that we can quickly adapt ourselves. In order to, um, in order, the, the objective is, of course, to you know be able to communicate. The objective is to able to lead, able to direct, and get uh, get the task done. Right. So, uh, in the HBR article, we talk about three things, three components, and um, of you know, cultural quotient or cultural intelligence. One is the head, which meaning meaning that you have the knowledge, you have the learning, understanding, uh, of you know you make an attempt to understand. Then the body, meaning you translate into action. Okay, so whatever you've learned, you put it to practice. Like for example, um, you know, in certain parts of the country, well, the way of greeting is is not to shake hands. You know, especially when it comes to uh, the opposite gender. You know, maybe some parts of the nation, right? Uh, you know, it's or maybe some people groups. You don't you don't shake hands, right? Uh, maybe some religion you don't shake hands. You maybe wish them like that, or you you know just say verbally. You don't shake hands. So to put to practice, you know, when if such a team is there, and uh, you to put to practice, right? Then the heart means that you are so secure in yourself that uh, you take that uh, step of faith or you take the you know you're bold and courageous to actually get into those environments and uh, you're not you know you you're not withholding you're not holding back from getting into such environments because you're secure right and the thing is there is the possibility to make mistakes there is the possibility of offending but because you are secure you are honest enough to you know accept those mistakes Right, especially like you know that in a in our nation, like all of us, you know, we, we eat with your right hand, and that that's you know you, you have enough reasons why why you know people eat with their right hands, right? Not just because you're a right hander, but if there is a you know mistake, then you're honest enough to accept that mistake, and then. You know, uh, if you're getting into that culture, and you, you know, you you again adapt and change, okay, like things like that, right? So, what are the advantages of having or developing cultural intelligence? So, we were looking at it as a skill, right? So, sometimes what happens is when we look at other cultures, which are so different, we don't want to even build a bridge, right? We avoid. Oh, I don't understand this culture. So different, so alien. So you know, I don't want anything to do with it, right? If people in a in a team are there, okay, you you speak, you talk. I don't want to interact, right? Because culturally they are different, right? But if we would have these in place, if we would learn, understand, and you know, based on that we interact, then it would help us to be effective. Okay, effective with someone who's different from us. Effective, you know. So, um, so it helps us to be effective, right? That's the that's the main thing. Okay, um, and it's it's a, it's definitely an advantage for us. So we can be uh, effective. We can be fruitful. And if you're looking at, you know, from a ministerial perspective, okay. Now, even within the nation, you see that. Culturally, people are so different, very different, right? Um, you you move, maybe you're in a city, you move, uh, you know, you travel a few kilometers, and then you go to a, you know, slightly semi-urban or semi-rural setting, you see the culture is different. And you are looked upon as an outsider, even within the same nation, right? right? So such is... Uh, such are the differences. Right? That's the reality of it, right? So it helps if you are thinking of reaching out. If you are thinking of, you know, uh, yeah, ministering, serving uh, with the gospel, it helps to know the culture. It helps to be emotionally intelligent, right? In our communication, in our behavior, everything. It helps, right? Simple things. Like when people go up north, uh, we see that um, in a certain rural settings, we say that, okay, women are covering their heads. Uh, it is not just a religious thing, but it's it's a custom, social custom, right? That is how they are, 
like they cover their head and um, recently i was in another you know like a rural city setting in a different state and well people everywhere uh, they were covering their head right so that is a social thing so so if as women you know women go to minister it it would be a good thing you know it's it's not something like something constraining or restricting or it's not a bondage you know that it's a social custom so as women if we are ministering there it helps if the women also cover their heads so what does it convey it conveys that hey we are you're not different and um, culturally you know we are uh, we are doing this we're building a bridge we are sensitive so the they're able to receive what you have to share receive the message um, without these things coming as bias, biases without these things coming as barriers right okay so how can i improve my cultural intelligence okay so again from this uh, article there are four things there is cq drive which means you have a motivation to learn about and respond to a different culture now for some of us you know it could be a natural thing right we are naturally curious naturally passionate about oh wow you know, the person from a different culture wow i want to know something i want to know everything about you and and how you guys do this and all but some of us could be very passive saying okay i'm not very keen i'm not very interested i'm comfortable why so one needs to have that motivation to learn and respond to a different culture right so what we call as a cq or cultural quotient drive the second thing is cultural quotient knowledge okay so you know you have a understanding of it you have a motivation you learn okay learn um behaviors values beliefs okay um body language how people greet each other clothing food these are all things right clothing food eating how they go about and like for example you know one place um well it was not a major thing but it you know it could be like people actually uh you know they hosted a dinner and uh, and and i went in i stepped in and i saw that oh wow they put a place on the ground okay there's a mat and then uh, so on the ground so it's been years since i sat cross legged right uh, i've been so stiff uh, i've never sat down cross legged always sitting at a table and so on so for me it was difficult i said okay i'll manage no problem i sat and it was so difficult i said okay there's no way i'm going to put the plate on the floor and you know take the food it's, it's, i'm going to drop it all over the place right so then uh, i had to say okay yeah, i'll it's okay i'll hold the plate in my hand and i will eat right as making an attempt then they noticed my discomfort and said no problem we'll put a you know we'll we'll give you a chair we'll uh, and then so on just, so it is kind of sorted out but thing it it you know the thing is that it could have been a major thing right it is a, just a custom about food and how food is eaten and so on right and let's say you know you so you so used to eating with cutlery right you have to have a spoon and a fork and and all that and and then there's no sign of cutlery there right so you have to use your fingers so you better do that right so and if if you're not so so these are things right so it's cultural knowledge cultural quotient where increase in cultural knowledge and uh, the third thing is you have a strategy right which means that uh, culturally sensitive you know as we have strategies for let's say missions or ministry and uh, it could even be you know things like maybe you're working for an organization and uh, it's about the product or the service that you're going to extend in that particular region you know it could even be that right so we need to have a strategy which includes uh being sensitive to culture right? uh, which includes um you know not offending culturally right so so yeah so it helps that so the strategy is you know um how does it, uh, how do we uh, you know what things would help is to question you know, to question and see why why is it if, if there's acceptance why is there acceptance if there is uh, low tolerance or low level of acceptance why is this why is it happening is it because of the message itself is it because of various other factors 
is the culture you know that is because of which it's there's so much of pushback right so we can ask keep an eye on local media and entertainment so that can actually give us an insight into you know the the behavior the the leisure uh, culture of the people uh, and we can actually note it down okay and the last one is also is is about the action okay so how we actually uh, act how we actually translate all that learning into behavior now they could we could be a little uncomfortable right in in actually doing certain things that are not so which doesn't come naturally to us in terms of culture but we can do that culturally you know and we can do that you know, i i know of uh, someone who um who was into cult cross cultural missions and um, and like he was going into a region which was uh, completely um you know uh, populated with people he was reaching out to a people who were you know vegetarians who were very staunch um you know traditionally etc the way they dressed so uh, and so on so he actually completely changed. he was a city person but he completely changed he completely changed his dietary habits um he became a vegetarian he uh, he changed the way he would dress himself right so he changed from going wearing jeans and t-shirt to wearing something that was you know a lot more traditional like a like a dhoti and and the way the dhoti was worn and uh, and and maybe like a kurta kind of thing and he learned the traditional in instruments uh, of that region and so on so he made that shift he made that learning into action why because he was concerned why because he had a burden for the people so he didn't want his culture or his um which is nothing wrong you know in the way he was uh, doing things nothing biblically wrong nothing ethically wrong so he did that so, so that he could remove those barriers so that the message of christ should be could be presented uh, without offense right without any prejudice they could receive it without any bias or prejudice so he did that right so we can you know we need to move into action right so th those are some of the uh, uh, key things that we can look at those four area things that we can look at so uh, just to sum up you know it doesn't refer to nationality or ethnicity or religion it can appear it, it, this cultural uh, intelligence or culture that we look at is also within our own groups right if you look at maybe if, even if you look at a family a family has a different culture right the way they do things okay they say okay this is what we do before we eat actually this is what we do after we eat and this is how we do it right so so it it helps to learn to adapt and uh, be flexible in these things without you know we're not compromising on truth or anything right okay so any questions on culture anything how flexible can we be <laughs> you know etc so this is all uh, pastor yeah 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 john uh pastor, let's say coming to food and if our culture does not um mm. uh, let's say we, we are not used to eating one type of meat and if you are in another place um sharing god's word okay. or ministry and they are okay to have such kind of meat and they are serving us mm. how should be our response oh uh, we are not okay to eating certain kind of meat and yes. they are okay with it and they serve us yes okay um well we can politely refuse and say okay i'm not used to this and uh, but i'll have more of that <laughs> the other thing um but also okay. i've read accounts of you know missionaries saying that uh, they they didn't want to offend but they they actually did it and it was like uh, it was a tough thing you know it was more of uh, i don't know if it was reptiles or you know like worms or things like that but it was you know, something of high protein definitely nutritious but uh, something that the missionaries were not used to but they went ahead and and did it you know because it was the first meal that they were offering and and um, you know they had 
originally been hostile, but they now they were making, um, you know, they were, uh, you know, extending friendship, extend. So they went ahead and shared in that meal. You know, so it depends, right? If if uh, uh, if you want to, you know, excuse yourself, you can always do that. Um, yeah. Yes, Pastor. Thank you. Right. Okay. Yeah. And also, I think, um, see, Paul says he became all things to all men in order to win a few, right? So um, definitely he was talking about the kind of people he was, uh, you know, definitely not about compromising the truth of the message, right? Uh, but uh, about culture, about the other things, about the external. Uh, in order to build a bridge. Yeah, Jafina, if you want to ask. Can you hear me? Yeah. So I just want to ask, like, so APC goes on missions, right? So do, to different places they go. So uh, India is very complicated, I, I believe. So because when I when I go back to Tamil Nadu, when I when I go and if I get any opportunity in ministry, I have to change a lot of things in my attires and the way they we really speak and everything. So APC, you do a cultural study before you go to missions, like for every single mission, do you do a cultural study of the place or how uh, you go forward in that? Yeah, so um, so whenever we go to you know any of the places where our outreach pastors are, so they kind of brief, you know, they tell us, okay, this is what it is, and this is what will happen, you know, as you minister, this is what is expected, etc. So externals, of course, you know, if, when men go, it's more or less uh, we are told uh, uh, it's a guideline that we wear simple clothes and we also wear, uh, to the most part, formal wear. Like we don't, uh, no short, no shorts, no, you know, no cargoes or jeans or whatever. Just wear simple uh, clothes and try to keep it formal and uh, yeah, do that. So that's the thing, external clothing. For women, you know, if it is a practice of the women to cover their heads, the women also cover their heads and do that. Forms of greeting, go with whatever is is the norm over there right so yeah if it is sh shaking hands you shake hands uh if it is you know if it's just a namaste you do that so yeah so that's the thing so there's no intense briefing as such because we already have a presence there like in terms of the pastors or ministry happening there and most of our you know um uh, missionary or missions trips have been to these regions so so there's already someone who's representative there and then who can brief us on these things. So it makes it so much more easier. Uh, yeah. And that, to adapt. That's the thing. Um, yeah. Okay. Right. So let's um, let's look at uh, the, the next topic which we have in our, uh, in our notes in, in terms of life skill. That is uh, the whole thing of change, okay? Um, you know, what is this change? What should be my, you know, my my mindset be about change, right? Um, because we see that change is something which is which is ever present. We've changed. There's biological growth, like physical growth, spiritual growth. We have changed. And uh, and so also the world around us is changing, right? So to expect things to be the same, to expect to hold on to the good old days, right, is uh, really a recipe, recipe for disaster, right? Sometimes um, we change, adapting to change is something. We are creatures of habit. Okay, let's face it, right? Um, when we go to church, we want to sit in the same place. You know, the same chair, same place, for whatever reason, right? So we are creatures of habit. And we get up at a certain time and we have this thing. So change, adapting to change, um, you know, doesn't come to us so easily, but it's something that we need to, you know, uh, be uh, aware of 
and uh, we should have that mindset. Okay, um, I just want to share with us um, this, um, you know, uh, this um, APC publication uh, written by Pastor about change. Just uh, share a few things uh, from it. Okay. So we see that uh, change is necessary. It's already happening. It could be an event. It could be a process. So what does it refer to? It refers to something that is going to be different from what it is. Okay. Um, even if you look at the life of the believer, it is uh, it is a scriptural thing to expect change. It's a normal thing. It's a beneficial thing to expect change. Like. To be conformed to the image of Jesus, which means that you are changing, changing, you know, to be like Christ, Christ likeness, right? Um, we are changing from glory to glory. You know, Second Corinthians three and verse eighteen, right? We are as in a, beholding as in a mirror the glory of God. We are being changed into the same image from glory to glory by the Spirit of God. Right? The Spirit of the Lord is bringing about change. So. Um, we need to understand that it is necessary. Okay. If you want to grow, if you want to leave, we have to leave certain things behind. right? So ch change is necessary if we need to grow. Change is necessary if we need to progress, like move ahead. Okay. So, um, so we could be having mindsets where we, we want to stay in the comfortable. right? I just want to stay with the familiar. I just want to stay with the comfortable because change means that I'm going into new territory. I have to deal with things that I'm not comfortable with. I'm not familiar with, right? So, um, but God's will for us is that we change. We change from one level of glory to another level of glory, that we progress more ahead, right? Um, like Paul himself says, you know, I. I press on, and I I forget. I don't I, I don't want to keep looking back. I forget those things that are behind, and I press on to those things for which the Holy God, God has laid hold of me. Right. So I press on. Okay. So um, whether it's our uh, something to do with our personality, something to do with our behavior our intellect, skills, everything, uh, finances, and so on, there will be uh, change. And so we need to be intentional about it, saying that, yes, in all these areas, if I want to see progress, if I want to see uh, you know, good happen, there, will, there needs to be change. right? So we welcome uh, this change. So we need to have a change or a, or a growth mindset. Right? OK, so. Um, you know, ch change in our motives, change in our desires. Okay, where uh, the psalmist says, "Create in me a clean heart, renew a steadfast spirit within me." Right, saying, "Renew a steadfast spirit within me." Uh, my motives, my desires, my you know whatever I long for, let it change. God, um, so. Let there be change in that, change in our motives, right? Um, maybe it's a motive or a desire. You know, if it is wrong, if it is fleshly, um, ask the Lord to change, right? Confess it, let go of it and change. We don't have to be burdened by saying, okay, this I'm living with this, I need to carry it. No, we don't have to, right? We can look forward to change. We can definitely, we have the resources that empower us to change the presence of the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, right? So our motives, our desires, everything can be uh, can change, can be purified, refined, and change our motives in ministry, right? Okay. So the, the, I'm just looking at these various areas where we can expect change or intentionally move in in changing, right? Change in our thinking. Now, this, these are main areas. Right? Change in our thinking change in our attitude, change in our speech, our communication, and behavior, right? Um, and of course, we know Romans 12, right? 12, 2, and the second part of it, it says that, do not be conformed 
to this world. Don't don't fit into the pattern of the world, but be renewed by or be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay, to so be transformed, renew of your mind, meaning your thoughts, your attitudes. Let it change. Um, if if the thoughts are keeping you down, if your thoughts, you know, if you if you actually you know think about it, our thoughts are keeping us where we are. Our current state of behavior, our current state of, you know, progress, you know, or where we have come from, it's because of our thoughts, which have changed, which have elevated us, uh, which has transformed us. We have come to this place. You know, one of the factors. You know, and uh, well, God changed us on the inside. He gave us maybe we, we uh, you know, we received healing, we received wholeness, we received strength, we received hope. But it all led to a change in the way we saw things, right? a change in our faith, even a change in perspective, and because of which oh, we have moved forward. You said, "Okay, you know, I, I'm I'm going higher. I'm taking a step higher." Right. So, a change, a change in thought, a change in attitude. Right. Maybe these attitudes. Um, uh, we have, which was, which is, which is, which is crept, you know, over a period of time. Maybe we went through some experience, went through, you know, the environment that we lived in. We have, you know, that kind of an attitude, right? I remember, you know, uh, my my dad really didn't have a very positive attitude. Like he was very careful. Uh, he was like uh, thinking of the worst, you know, which is which helpful, but then. Uh, you know, which means you prepare well, etc. So that's the positive side of it. But then you always saw the glass half empty, right? You always saw, okay, what if something worse happens? What if you lose this? You know, so to the point that hey, don't get into these things. I right? don't don't take up responsibilities. What if you, you know, mess up? You know, that kind of thing. So you know, you you carry that attitude with you, and then you know, you want to see change. You want to see progress. Okay. So, which means that our attitude, if if one has that kind of an attitude of a, you know, pessimistic attitude, that has to change. Where you recognize your identity is not from the environment. Your identity is, you know, who you have become as a new creation, and therefore your attitude has to conform to your identity. Right. So, there's change in that. We expect change. We work towards change in that. Right, a change in our, um, uh, in our attitude, right? So, which we see possibilities, we expect possibilities, uh, which is faith, right? According to the Word of God, it's not assumption, it's not presumption, but you know, grounded in the Word of God, where you we come to a place of having a positive attitude, right? not for the sake of saying, "Hey, I need to be positive all the time." It's not like that, but. Really grounded in the truth of God's word. You know, this is what God's word says I am, and this is what God's word says I can be. Right. Therefore, my attitude, I will change my attitude. Okay. Um, okay. So, what are some things like, you know, uh, maybe our, our desires are small, our aspirations are very small or low, right? So. With a change in attitude, with a change in thinking, we can actually think big, dream big, aspire big things. Right? Uh, who was it who said, you know, um, expect great things from God, attempt great things from God, expect great things? Who was it? William Carey? Or we have we have uh, one of these. Um, uh, maybe you can do a quick Google search. You know, act, um, I don't know if it was John Wesley or William Carey. You know. Is that, um yeah so expect great things attempt great things for god right so that comes from a place of again change change william carey okay and uh, yeah i think we we see it in his life right in the in the face of so many challenges and uh, you know he he attempted great things he expected great things and by no means is it a you know uh, his accomplishments in ministry uh, no means any, you know, it's not small in any way. It's a big, so many languages, the Bible you know, being translated into so much of social change, etc. Right? So, okay. Right. Okay. So, 
um, so in terms of attitude, it can be that, you know, maybe one has a very complacent attitude, maybe a, you know, very passive attitude, but, um, you know, we need a change in that. Okay. Certain things can be, maybe there is delay because we postpone things because we fear change, right? We postpone things because we are perfectionists, maybe. Uh, and we say we think that okay, we're not ready enough, we're not skilled enough um, for whatever we need to do, right? Or we won't want to make a mistake, and so these are reasons why you know, things are put off, right? So, um, but we need to change that. So, thoughts, attitude, uh, and and change, and speech can change. You know, our confession, our speech, our conversations, everything changes. And um, and so our behavior also changed. You know, you know the thing is, we um, uh, growing up, we had this uh, thing. You know, especially in school and college, you know, if you scored high marks, you know, you were seen as someone very different. And so, um, you know, so so people will actually downplay it. Oh, I I really don't know how I got these marks. I really don't. I didn't study at all. You know, I don't know. I just I think it's a fluke just got it like that i don't know and also there was a much glorifying of failure okay so if you failed in like two papers three papers at least among the guys it was like this you know, guys would say like i got you know each area was called a cup so he said, i got three cups <laughs> i got three areas three papers i failed and you know that was a culture thing right so but we need to change that right so your attitude and your behavior, everything changes. Your expectation is like, hey, I'm, I'm, I want to do well, right? I want to do well, and I'm not really apologetic about. I'm not going to. I'm, I'm not going to be apologizing for doing well. That is what is you know. I want to progress, uh, and I don't want to. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be comfortable wearing it. Right? I'm on, I want to be comfortable walking in that progress. I want to be comfortable walking in that success. Right. Um, so yeah. Okay. So th the other thing is that um, there are certain changes that happens uh, which are unexpected. Right. So, uh, for example, uh, be because you know, as believers, we're open to the work of the Spirit. God does some changes in us. Um, you know, maybe events, people, you know, divine appointments that really launches into a divine destiny right so if we are you know if, if you are careful or if you are just led by the spirit of god and yielded to the spirit of god you realize that a hey, god is doing something you know i'm this is a this is an unexpected thing it's an unexpected change but let me let me go with it and right? uh, we, we can't reason things out we can't you know uh, uh, um, I mean, explain each and everything. It's a work of God, right? Like for me in my life, me coming to, uh, you know, saying yes to an invitation to lead worship at, at a church changed destiny, right? So, well, that was that is how the Holy Spirit orchestrated. It was just saying yes to lead worship. In a, I could have very well said no, not available, not thing. But then just that saying yes, you know, sent me on a path or a trajectory, spiritually and otherwise, and uh, and to you know reaching a destiny and continuing with the journey. Right. So, so these are things. Um, and you can read the book, and there are some personal instances which Pastor shares, and yeah, very encouraging to see that. Right. So. We need to understand that change is necessary just to have this mindset, just to have this as a ongoing skill, right? Ongoing thing where we um, where we tell ourselves, where we reiterate, saying, "Okay, this is necessary for my growth. This is necessary for my change." Okay, so John chapter twelve verse twenty four: Unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. There is a change. There is a change to the texture. There is a change to the state of the that grain, that seed which falls into the ground, and uh, and with that change comes fruitfulness, right? Uh, much fruitfulness, rather. So uh, we just need to um, be aware of that. 
okay so um yeah um so just to just for us to reiterate to have that perspective right to have that mindset um uh, where to expect growth you know we all of us want growth all of us want progress i don't think anyone who does not want that but to really link it to make that connection that it is linked to change it is linked to change in environment it is linked to a change you know if we are if we have that within us then we are better positioned like for bro growth and progress right okay um yeah so you can go through this uh, this booklet as well i'll upload this along with um, the cultural intelligence one okay okay so we'll stop here um next class um could be our last one where we look at the final chapter which is uh, continuous learning and i really haven't i haven't posted the the quiz yet okay so i'll do that i think in the announcement i actually made a thing saying that during the day i will i, uh, I couldn't do that so i will post the quiz for the online class and for the in person class and for the e learning students you know it will be posted um and then you will have the information on your discussion page right as a post so you'll know about it okay so we'll stop here thank you god bless bye bye thank you pastor